I have a question for you, and it's a big question. Have you ever cut your own hair? And if you did, I want to know how it went. How did you do it? What made you do it? Everything. Did it turn out the way you wanted it to turn out? Did you have to go to the salon and have someone mm, totally redo it or just tweak it a little bit? I want to know all about it. And that's what the video is going to be about today is this haircut that I have given myself. And when I tell you about it, oh, wow. Oh, goodness. We're going to talk about moving makeup. Now, is there such a thing as moving makeup? We'll talk about that. I did a little shopping. I'll show you this top. And I have some very funny stories to tell you uh, from this moving experience. So let's do it, okay? I, well, a couple of things have happened with this move. Number one, I can't find my hair dryer. Uh, I, I'm sure I've probably, at the last minute, I had, a, I still have some craft boxes and arty, artsy paints to unpack, and at the last minute I was packing those things, and I did save my hair dryer out, and I suspect that I just put that hair dryer in one of those boxes thinking that I would remember where I had put it, but I've turned the house upside down looking for my hair dryer. I had an old, old, old hair dryer that did make the move, and it uh, is one that I've always kept in our guest bathroom for anyone who is here in case they need a hair dryer. It works just fine, and I've been using it. But I've realized for a first time in a long, long time just how long my hair had gotten. I didn't realize it. I've been wearing it, you know, pulled back and up for so long, and because it's so easy and it's so cool, I just pull it in the ponytail or I put it, you know, back with a big clip and that's it for sure off of my face. But my hair had gotten so long with this move and everything leading up to it that, you know, I just wasn't paying any attention, number one, to my roots, but number two, to the length of my hair. I mean, my hair was long, and when I tell you it was long, it was at least down to my bra. It was that long. I can't remember the last time that I had my hair that long, and, and again, it was because I'm just not paying attention to it. But when I washed my hair the other day, and I was combing through it, it was like, I have to do something about it. So I went into action, and I started to film it, and I decided not to, and I'm going to tell you why I decided not to film it. I decided not to film it because I am so afraid that some of you will see it and think, oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut my hair the same way, and then it may not work out for you, and you may have a mess, and... For some of us, it does take a while for our hair to grow. I'm one of those lucky people that my hair grows super fast. But I, I'm going to tell you how I did it and how I've, I've always cut it myself. But I don't, I'm not going to show you. So this is it. And it is so, so easy. And I, I think I first saw this in a Glamour magazine probably 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Who knows? And on and off over the years, I have cut my hair this way. Normally, I only cut it about an inch. And that way, since I always wear my hair long anyway, cutting an inch off of it is not going to matter if I mess it up. Uh, but cutting any more than that, I could mess it up, I think. But what I do is I pull it when it's wet. I comb through it so there's no tangles in it. And I comb it and I get it into all of it into a really high ponytail. And when, and then I, I adjust where I want the ponytail. If I want more layers closer to the front of my head, I will 
pulled the ponytail up higher on my head to, toward the front. If I want longer layers, I have my ponytail back more because what I'm gonna do is once I get it in the ponytail and I comb it again, the ponytail part to make sure I have it all smooth or as smooth as I can, and then I take my scissors and I go straight across just like that at the very end, usually about an inch, maybe a little bit more, but not much. But this time, because my hair was so long, I knew I wanted to cut a lot off of it. And I knew I wanted to leave my up front a little bit longer. So I pulled my ponytail to about where this clip is right now. And when I tell you I cut at least five inches off of my hair, I cut five inches off of my hair. And you can see how long it is. It's still below my shoulders. So that tells you something. So I dried it and, you know, did a little curling and went in, Jim was watching golf, and I, I walked into the living room where he was and said, what do you think about my hair? And he looked and he said, did you cut it? I said, I did. And he said, well, you know, I like it, which is what I expected him to say. But he said, I like it. He said, I've noticed lately that your hair was getting real, real long. And I wondered if you wanted it that way or if, if you just uh, didn't realize, because we've been so busy, how long it was getting. So anyway, got it off, got it cut off. My rule of thumb is I still have to be able to get it uh, in a ponytail or pulled back with a clip. Some of you will, would probably wonder why I don't just cut my hair completely. I mean, really short. I'm not a short-haired person. I wish I were. Uh, in my entire adult life, I have had my hair really, really short twice. Had it cut, had it styled, cute style, cute haircut. It just wasn't me. I hated it. First time I did it, I swore up and down I'd never do it again. About 20 years later, I did it again. And just on a whim. And I promised myself then I would never, never, never have short hair again. And I haven't. And I won't. At some point, when we were leading up to the move, I heard from ELF, and they asked me if I would like to be on their PR list. And of course, I said yes. I use so much ELF product. You know, and I'm looking down here to get it, that this is my favorite eyebrow pencil. The Instant Lift Brow Pencil is my very favorite of every pencil out there, and it's just a couple of dollars, somewhere around there, but it's just, it's almost free. And I use a couple of other products that I love with, uh, with e.l.f., and that's why I said yes. Uh, don't know if I'll stay on it. It may be a one-time thing. Who knows? They didn't ask anything. They didn't ask me to show it. They didn't ask me to review it. They just asked if I would like to be on their PR list. I want to show you another product that I have been using, and I'm pretty sure I've shown it to you and talked about it, but I think everybody in the world is using this. But it's the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. And I tell you, I mean, you can tell I've used it. I really do like this primer. Uh, and I wear it a lot of days when I want to wear a primer, uh, depending on what makeup I'm wearing. I will put this on. And would you believe, at some point during this move, I got this big package from e.l.f. And it came just like this. And I'm going to, I mean, this was the box, the outside box. And it came in the mail just like this. I wanted to just show you this and then you know, at some point later on, we'll play with a couple of them. A couple of them aren't suitable for me. But they sent the new uh, Acne Fighting Putty Primer. So, and it's green. So if you um, have acne or are acne prone, that might be a very good primer for you. Then uh, they sent, and these are not numbered, 
uh, these are the bronzers, the new putty bronzers. And if you see the little white on the top, they were backwards in here and I pulled them out to look at them. So you can see that one is dark. And then the next one is really dark. And then the next one is not quite as dark. It's sort of the medium. So let's do this. We have the lighter, the medium, and the dark. So I'm going to play around with these and see how I like them. They all, and then they also sent a one like the one I bought myself and I've been using. So I'm not going to open that yet for sure. And then there's a new little putty primer, putty primer applicator, and it's just a little brush. I haven't seen this in the stores. It may be there now, but I haven't seen it. So this is what they sent, and I'm excited to try the putty bronzers to see which one of those I like the most. And we'll talk about it later. I'll probably do a get ready with me and show me using it. But I wanted to tell you too that I have been using Throughout this move, the very same makeup every single day, and I mean every single day. When we were packing and I was getting into my bathroom and really getting into, okay, I need to leave some things here to use and get everything else packed, I decided to pick out some makeup that I thought I could wear every single day. and what's in this little box is what I kept out and it's what I have on today and let me let me just show you what it is now first of all I had I just also just left out some brushes I left out my flat top brush that you know I use all the time these are three of those uh, new BK beauty brushes I, this one is for blush that one is for some powder and this is eyeshadow so these are the only brushes that I have used for close to a month. A month I've been doing this. So let me show you what else is here. I, uh, for foundation, I kept out the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear 3-in-1. And my color is 845 Warm Beige. This is a little bit light for me. But I can darken this up with a bronzer, probably one of those putty bronzers. I have worn this very foundation every single day. And by the way, I'll list all of this below. For concealer, I've been using the e.l.f. 16-Hour Camo Concealer. And I'm using the Medium Peach. For my eyebrows, you know, the e.l.f instant brow lift pencil and I normally use taupe or light brown. I can use either one of those colors. For powder I used and, and I only use powder for uh, underneath my eyes when I set my concealer. This I don't need a powder with. So I'm using the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder for under eyes. That's that. For blush I've been using the Wet n Wild in Mellow Wine. Maybe you can see it better. Mellow Wine. For eyeshadow, I'm using the CoverGirl number 235 Pure Romance. And, whoa. That's what it looks like. I'm putting this color on all over and this over the mobile lid, my upper lid. Speaking of mobile, we've been using, and I've been using every time I get out, Jim calls her the map girl, the map app on my iPhone to find my way around everywhere I'm going here. I'm starting to sort of get the lay of the land. We live basically about less than an hour from Mobile, Alabama. 
Map Girl calls Mobile Mobile. So we we we've just laughed about it and laughed about it, and now when we talk about the Mobile Highway or going toward the Mobile Highway, we call it the Mobile Highway because of Map Girl. So does Map Girl say anything funny to you? Mispronounce names or words that you know aren't right? Well, it's mobile. It's, see, now I can't say it. It's mobile, she says. Mobile, Alabama. But anyway, these are the eyeshadows, just mainly these two, that I have been wearing for a month. Eyeliner is my Wet n Wild Breakup Proof in black. I've been using the CoverGirl Outlash Blast Clean Mascara in black. I have worn every single day the CoverGirl uh, Outlast Lip Stain 16 Hour, I think, in color 585. And the gloss that goes on top of it. And that's it. I have worn this exact face every day for a month. For a month. And again, I will list all of that below this video if you're interested. So we were driving down the street one day and guess what I saw? I saw Bill's outlet. Hallelujah. I couldn't believe it. And my first real outing by myself, I decided to stop in there. And I have to tell you, I was really disappointed. It was nothing like our store in Panama City Beach. I mean, nothing. It was pretty much empty. But I did get this top. And I really do like it. Uh, I am hoping that maybe, you know, they just had a run on their clothes. Maybe they need, are waiting on a shipment. I'm not sure what. I'll, I'll keep going in there, though, and just to check them out, just to see. Because with them, like Ross and some of the other stores, you know, they get shipments in all the time, but for some reason, that store was empty. I, ha I do have a couple of really funny stories to tell you, and, and I even made a note of them on my notes in my iPhone. And what's so funny is usually when I think of something that I want to say in a video, I'll just put two or three words because I figure that those two or three words will remind me of what I want to talk about. And the very first thing on here is something that I have no idea what it's about. It says, story about losing remotes. Well, that sounds like that could be a story. But when I looked at this a couple of days ago, I thought, Story about losing remotes. I don't remember losing remotes. And I thought about it, and I thought about it. And finally, I asked Jim. I said, Jim, I have a note here to talk about uh, a funny story about losing remotes. I said, do you know, do you remember what happened? And... He said, I don't have any idea. I don't remember anything. So I'm supposing the funny story in that, the fact that neither one of us can remember what the story was about losing the remotes is the funny story. That's funny in itself. That that would happen and it would impress me enough to make a note of it in my phone, but yet... I have no memory of it. And hold on. Do you see sweat? It's sweat. This room, I have the fan on, but it's warm in this room. I have this. I'm going to stop recording, cool down for just a second, and I'll be right back. All righty, let's do this again. Whoops, I'll turn my fan off. And let's look at, oh, this is a funny one. We're in the throes of moving. And 
it, as a matter of fact, it was our actual moving day. I got up, I'd saved out a, a couple of outfits to wear for a couple of days uh, so that I, on the advice of many of you, thank you, thank you for all your advice. But anyway, I, I decided to wear one of my t-shirts and a pair of leggings that came just below my knees. So I got up and I got dressed. And all morning, I mean all morning, even up until the early afternoon, I kept thinking something didn't feel right. Something just didn't feel right. And I couldn't put my hands on it. And then I decided at some point in all of my busyness that maybe it was these leggings I had on that maybe the last time I washed them and I put them in the dryer and they shrunk because they were definitely snug around the middle. It was like they just, it was, I, I, it's hard to describe. I finally found the time to go to the bathroom. And when I did, I realized I had my leggings on backwards. You know how they're higher in the front than they are in the, you know how they're higher in the back than they are in the front. So I took them off, put them back on right, and I was okay for the rest of the day. But I had my pants on backwards. I tangled up with a cardboard box. And when I tell you it was bad, it was bad. It was open. I was packing it. My phone rang. I went to get it. Had to step over the box. And when I did, I caught the cardboard flap on the box. And you know that's stiff. It was, a, it was not a big box. It was probably about 18 inches high. Well, it started off, it cut me on the shin. It started just under my knee and sort of did an S-curve down on to my foot. And it was not a bad cut. It was a scratch. That's all it was. It was just a scratch. But it bled a little bit. But as I turned, trying to get away from the box, the, the point on one of the sides or the corners caught my calf on the very back. And it made a pretty good cut, a pretty good cut. Not a big cut, but it was more of a deeper cut. And I mean, it bled and it bled and it bled. And it is finally pretty much healed. Luckily, I knew exactly where some antibiotic uh, salve was and band-aids and bandages. So I was able to take care of that. Now this, the cut on the front of my leg down my shin, it's, you would never know it was there. I can still see, if I turn around and stretch, I can see the back of my calf and it's healing, but I'm telling you, taught me not to step over a cardboard box again, period, or maybe anything for that matter. And then, the last funny story, and this is, um, this may just be me, but listen, if anything like this has ever happened to you, I want to know about it. I, I mean, I want to know, so make sure and put it in the, put it in the comments. So we bought this house, and we only saw it one time, one time, and made the offer on it. But you look around, and you look in closets, and you open cabinets, and you see things that you had no idea that they were there. And a lot of it is because this house was custom built for the original owners, and I think I've told you that story, and, and they've lived here for 25 years, and their son-in-law is a contractor, and he built the house. So naturally, he would do things to this house because it was for them that were just maybe a little bit over and above. So, we've been in the house for maybe a week, a week and a half, two weeks, and exactly at 2.22 one morning, I woke up to a woman speaking. And it sounded like she was coming from the living room. And she said, three times she said this phrase, change batteries now. Change batteries now. 
change batteries now. It woke Jim up too. And we're going, what was that? And he said, you know what? I bet it's I bet it's a smoke alarm. The batteries need changing. And he said, Well, I'm not gonna do anything about it in the middle of the night. He said, you know, we'll address it in the morning. That was at 2.22 a.m. At 3.22 a.m., we heard it again. Change batteries now. Change batteries now. It was real, a loud, forceful woman's voice. Change batteries now. At 4.22, we heard it again. Every hour, not on the hour, but on whatever it was, 22, we would hear it. These are 10-foot ceilings. The smoke alarms are, in the, are you know, attached to the ceiling. We don't have a ladder big enough to get up there. We haven't been able to find a handyman yet. It's been very low on our radar. So we, you know, we knew we needed to get those batteries changed, but we were just going to have to live with it. And then it was like we were hearing them other places in the house. Change batteries now. Change batteries now. It was like wherever you were, she was talking. We're calling her now Ceiling Lady. Ceiling Lady is talking to us from different rooms. This is getting ridiculous. One day, about, I don't know, four or five days later, I go into the pantry to get something. And while I'm in the pantry, ceiling lady says, change batteries now. She said it three times, in the pantry, while I'm in the pantry. And I went, oh, no. I looked over, and there on a shelf behind maybe the cereal box was a cordless phone. And the cordless phone was talking. And the light bulb went off for me that that's one of the things that I had found out about this house was these there were these black cordless phones everywhere. They were in every bedroom. They were in a big closet. They were in the both bathrooms. There was one, uh, uh, one mounted on the wall in the garage. There was one out on the sunroom. They were everywhere. And I knew they were there. In, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, one of these days when I have nothing else to do, I'm going to gather all these phones up. Because when we decided to uh, have cable here, we were asked if we wanted a landline uh, or needed a landline. And we said no. We didn't want to mess with it. So anyway, I went around and I gathered up all of these black cordless phones right then and took them out into the garage. And when I tell you that they're still talking, they're still talking. The only thing I can figure is that maybe when they got them, they got a deal on them and they just decided to put them in every room. Another thing is, they're old, they were older. Uh, we're older, but they were much older than we are. And it could have been uh, a, a security thing for them if they fell or if they needed help or, you know, wherever they were in this house or in the garage or on the, in the sunroom, wherever they were, you know, maybe they felt like they needed a phone nearby and they may not have their cell phone with them, but they would have access to a landline. So it, it just never occurred to us, to either one of us. And our agent came by to who, who helped us buy this house to bring us the closing papers one day and I said something to her about it. I said, this is a mystery and she went, oh my gosh, I can't imagine what it is and we've sat, tried to figure it out and not one of us ever came up with 
the idea that it could be these black cordless phones that had been talking to us for a week or so at that point. But anyway, as I said, we looked back on it and we thought it was really, really funny because we honestly thought it was the smoke detectors. I even Googled it to see what if smoke detectors actually will talk to you. And of course, every smoke detector I've ever had did that chirping sound when it needed new batteries. And it, you know, when I Googled it, it said they chirp or they beep. But nowhere did it say anything about them talking to you. If you have a talking smoke detector, maybe we need to know about that too. But the mystery of the ceiling lady was finally solved. And they're all in the garage together and they just, we can hear them from time to time, especially if we happen to be outside or in the garage, we can hear them, you know, change batteries. Figure sooner or later they'll just die, maybe. One last thing. It may be the next video that I do, but I have some things that I need to update you on. Things that we've talked about in the last couple of months, uh, questions I've asked you, maybe some the, the one particular product that I've shown you that I was trying out. I want to catch you up on that. I also want to catch you up on my little friend, Dawn, that many of you saw that video and many of you were so, so kind to make donations through the GoFundMe to help them. Uh, and if you saw that video, then you know what I'm talking about. But I want to update you on that for sure. And just let, uh, again, let you know how much I appreciate all of you for keeping them in your prayers. And, and just for, if you did donate, no matter how large or how small, I appreciate it. And, and I know Dawn did and does still. She still talks about it. She's a sweet, sweet person. That may be the very next video, so stay tuned for that. Let me know if you think you're gonna cut your hair. If you do, let me know how it goes. Let me know about funny stories. And, you know, I, I sort of think that's it. I've gotta do something to this room to get it a little bit better for us to film in. And, and I'll keep you updated as the house progresses and I can show you more and more and more about the house. I did go out yesterday with Jim and, and we uh, went to a little antique mall. We were gonna go to, to a couple and we went to the second one that was closed, but we loved the first one. We're going to check out an antique store here, looking for a couple of pieces of furniture, not necessarily to buy anything today, but see something that we love, we may, but just checking out some stores. Want to say anything, Jim? No, not unless <laughs> we find something to bring home. Okay, we'll talk about it then. Look at the glitter. Oh my gosh. This is glitter heaven. We did, really didn't find anything in there that we needed or wanted. I'm looking for about three different pieces of furniture to sort of fill in things that we just didn't have and we need. And I know that I could go to a furniture store and probably find things that would work, but I'm looking for something with a little bit more character, uh, something that maybe is a little bit more fitting to the house. I'm not sure. It's almost like I'll know it when I see it, but I may have included uh, some footage here that I took at this little antique store. The one thing I do know is I saw a lot of things that I will be interested in if they're still there but I know I'll go back there for sure. I'll take you with me. 
I want to thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Know that I love you. And don't forget to go out and be kind. Just be kind. Bye-bye.